And we're now live. And hello, everyone who's joining us today. We're just going to wait a few minutes while people get in and get settled on their technology. While we wait, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat menu and to offer a land acknowledgement from where you're joining us from today. And again, to those who are just joining us, we're going to wait a few more minutes while people get in and get settled, but please feel free to introduce yourself and offer a land acknowledgement in the chat. And another reminder to those who are just joining us, we'll wait another uh, two minutes, so about three minutes after the hour before we get started. And in the meantime, please feel free to introduce yourself and to offer a land acknowledgement in the chat menu. All right, folks, well, we'll get started. Uh, the numbers are continuing to go up, but uh, a lot of the stuff at the beginning is repetitive if you've been to other KEGS events this week. Uh, so welcome to the second KEGS virtual symposia. My name is Ian Worley, and I'm the executive director of the Canadian Association for Graduate Studies, or L'Association Canadienne pour les Etudes Supérieures. On behalf of the KEGS board of directors, we are delighted that you have joined us here today. And we hope that this week long series of webinars has and will continue to inform, connect and inspire you during this unprecedented moment in the history of higher education. The events planned this week seek to address a variety of challenges, opportunities and inflection points in graduate studies, including student empowerment, the use of digital tools and technologies, strategies for collecting, preserving and sharing data, equitable inclusion and the struggle against anti black racism. Discussions on these topics are being led by a diverse group of presenters from across Canada, including deans of graduate studies, faculty members, administrators, graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, and early career researchers. The goal of this virtual event is to provide a forum for sharing information and experiences, posing questions, and building strategies for adapting to our new environment. Before we begin today's session, I would like to make a few housekeeping announcements. First, this session is sim has a simultaneous remote transcription service, which you can access through the link provided in the chat menu. A new window will open on your internet browser and translated text should begin, begin streaming automatically. Secondly, if you have any questions or comments for the speakers, please feel free to use the Q&A tool. If you would like to pose a question verbally, let us know and we can offer you the virtual mic. If you would like to converse with other attendees throughout the session, please feel free to use the chat menu. Next, we highly recommend that you select speaker view on your Zoom screen by clicking on the top right hand side of the window. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the CAG's YouTube page in a few weeks. It is also essential that we recognize and acknowledge that this symposia is being hosted virtually from the city of Ottawa which is built on unceded Algonquin and Anishinaabe territory. CAGS and those gathered here today honor all First Nations, Inuit, Métis people and their valuable past and present contributions to this land. I would now like to introduce our webinar for today titled Building Paths of Self-Discovery and Development, Empowering Graduate Students Through a Digital Platform. This presentation explores demographic shifts in graduate student populations and the ways in which student institutions engage and interact with their students. 
both during and after the pandemic using a case study conducted through the College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies at the University of Saskatchewan. The speakers today will highlight how the Grad Hub program has served to reinvent and reimagine the value and role that graduate students play within our institutions. This presentation will share stories about the Grad Hub program, its process of creation, and the importance of collaboration, being open to change, and knowing when to adapt. This event will be led by Andrew Hartman, a PhD candidate in the Department of Psychology at the University of Saskatchewan. Andrew is a proud queer Métis individual born and raised on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. Before starting their PhD, Andrew worked for five years in student affairs, providing holistic care and mentorship to undergraduate students, all while completing their master's in leadership in higher education. Presently, Andrew is pursuing their PhD in applied social psychology with their dissertation focusing on understanding the psychological processes of shame and disenfranchisement grief in 2SLGBTQ survivors of traumatic gender-based violence. Andrew serves as secretary for the Saskatchewan chapter of the Canadian Evaluation Society. And it is also my understanding that Andrew is fond of cats and it is my hope that we will get to meet Luna in today's webinar. I now pass the virtual mic over to you, Andrew. Awesome, thank you so much for that introduction. Luna will definitely uh, be making an appearance at one point today. I would also love to introduce uh, my co-pilot today, Lori Litza, who's been involved heavily in the project, who is the executive assistant or miracle worker, I like to always say to uh, the Dean of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies. Uh, yeah, Lori and I, I don't know, we read each other's minds and this project is really this collaboration where she as a staff has empowered graduate students and myself to really um, make this wonderful program that serves graduate students. I'm really, really honored actually. Uh, Lori and I like to compliment each other a lot, but to have her here uh, in this presentation. Okay, so, oh, and we have a dog. Laura, we have to, you have to introduce your dog. This is Big Louie. He actually sits on my knee all the time. I don't know what's going to happen when we all go back to the office. I'm, I might have to get him like a position on campus or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, we're really excited today to share with everyone our experiences with building and also just dreaming of the graduate hub and this new way of uh, working with our graduate students. Uh, so with that, we look forward to begin. Uh, we would, Laura and I would like to acknowledge that we both are here from Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis where the University of Saskatchewan is also. And whenever I give a land acknowledgement, I always reflect and think about my work and my relationship with the land, my ancestors' relationships with the land, and my, what am I doing within my role to support reconciliation? And within our graduate hub, that was something that really we took to heart when we were doing it, to making sure that um, we were supporting all of our students and also educating with the truth of Canada's history in residential schools for newcomers coming to our land so that they could understand our history, our shared history, and be one with us and knowing in this way moving forward in a very intentional good way. So as we set the stage for this lovely brilliant webinar, uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to just introduce the project team, talk about the purpose, our values. These are very critical in guiding the hub and what we always looked back to when we we're at pivot points. Uh, where we had to make decisions, we always held back to our purpose and our values and the way that we were doing this work. And that would often guide us in, uh, in those next steps forwards. We're gonna go over the design process, what that actually looked like, go over some of the nuts and bolts so that people can really see uh, one way of doing it. And then hopefully you'll say, oh, I'll, no, you should have done this and that you'll go and do that and be even better. We're gonna take a tour, you're actually gonna see the Grad Hub. We wanna let you tap in and uh, walk with me through and take a look at what 
and why we were dreaming the way we were. Go over some stats we've actually collected. Uh, the Grad Hub is very evaluation focused. So we actually have some stats and have been looking at understanding what is the impact of our Grad Hub? Who's connecting with us? That's really also informing our next stages. And then we're gonna throw some takeaways at youth. So that way you have uh, time to uh, think about what maybe you wanna take with this. About halfway through, we do have questions and then we kind of dive back in. So we kind of have a nice uh, break in the middle that allows us to kind of have a discussion. And then those questions can really inform that last half of the uh, webinar. So the Grad Hub team, there is myself in the bottom left. Uh, I'm the hub team leader. We have in the bottom right, the CGPS executive assistant, Laura Litza here with us, who's providing all the project oversight and kicking down doors and introducing people. And then we have, what was really exciting is that we've actually expanded, the Grad Hub now has expanded beyond the capacity of just Lori and I, that the project is getting bigger. Uh, we're having more institutional people coming into the project. And so with that, our capacity has grown. So we have actually brought on uh, two graduate students. We have Bonnie Hartman, who is in her graduate program in the College of Education. She is specializing in curriculum design. So in, as you'll see, one of our hubs, she's actually doing all the background curriculum design work for us. We have John Malik, who's a master's student in applied social psychology. His role and their role are to uh, actually help pull in and seeing how can we improve the hub? Are we having an impact? If not, why? Uh, so John works with me on quite a variety of projects. So we're very lucky to have Bonnie and John. We also have Cassidy Guy, who is doing a bachelor's students in marketing and is our student marketing assistant. Cassidy is absolutely brilliant. Uh, so we have these, these great three people, well, four of us graduate students, undergraduate students working together, collaborating on this project to move it forward. But we also have a lot of graduate student uh, champions who are involved or just really big advocates, um, really helping maybe just connect other people, pulling people in, spreading the word, um, giving us feedback, participating that we want to really acknowledge their wisdom and their roles and what they're sharing with us, uh, because without them, this work wouldn't happen. So our project purpose, the purpose of this Grad Hub uh, is to embrace the complexity of graduate students' roles within the institution by introducing development opportunities during the entire student life cycle, not only as students, but as influencers and champions of graduate education. So our platform actually is trying to work and support students in discovering every graduate student's journey is different. And so it's really empowering them to say, okay, here's my program, here's my institution, I can access this virtual system that helps just educate me and allow me to answer my questions that I have. Because every graduate student's coming in at different places and our platform is designed to meet students where they're at and allow them to access the right information at the right time throughout their entire life cycle. So maybe they were just accepted and they're looking at, hey, I'm, I'm looking at moving to this. What is this city like? Or maybe they're, uh, I'm on my first time on campus uh, where, where do I find computers to log in so I can access the library? They're in their end and they're like, okay, I'm working on my thesis. What does that look like? How do I actually do it? It's all in this nice um, laid out format that's all in one place. All the different touch points across the institution is in a central location. They get to land there and then go out. So I always say it's the old fashioned operator. When we back in the day, that was such a useful feature of actually having somewhere to go and then know where you want to land rather than being a pinball kind of bouncing around the institution. Um, so kind of, yeah, supporting graduate students and the university working together. One of the most important slides I'd actually say for today is our guiding values. Uh, so when we were looking at these just naturally formed when Laurie and I were conversing, we were talking about 
uh, just things that were really important with this project and the way that we moved forward with this project. And then as, uh, as we kept moving back, we kept reusing a lot using these words. And then as we started to present, we started documenting and now actually really leaning on these uh, in the way of how do we move forwards. So the big one is we're trying to reshift our focus from orientation, which is very uh, undergraduate focus, very important um, to more of a concept of onboarding, which is grounded in HR, which looks at actually that more of that transition phase and all the different pieces of information that the student needs to be able to do their role. Uh, I always say graduate students, Lori and I have had this conversation, graduate students are in a really weird kind of place. And I say this being a graduate student where we are students and we do work, but we're not staff. Uh, and we're in this both, we also do teaching and we also do TA and so we're in this uh, kind of central place where again, we're pulled in all directions, but we don't have anything targeted. We kind of, we do the staff things that we're supposed to do. We do the student things we're supposed to do, but it's really hard sometimes as students told us to know when and where am I allowed to be included. So moving from how about we be intentional with and making sure we're giving students and hitting all the right beats. We listen to graduate students needs, uh, what graduate students want, they're our teachers, they teach us what is going on in their lives, what are their experiences, what has shifted and what are the gaps in our services because life has moved. Uh, so listening to graduate students and how to better improve what we should be doing is really vital and why the Graduate Hub success is what it is, is because graduate students shared with us. We've been working um, to make sure that the entire project is bringing students in to design it, but also bringing graduate students to collaborate together. So we're not, it's this beautiful thing where not only is it a program, but it's also having developmental powers in graduate students and developing their careers, as well as helping them help other graduate students. It also helps our work with the tone, with the way information is conveyed, that graduate students really help us guide and making sure that information uh, is just so accessible in a way and meeting the students' needs. What's really been important as well with the graduate students, we work really closely with them, but we also work really closely with everyone else on our campus. We're really in that next stage now of uh, working with different partners on campus with our teaching, uh, in teaching Excellence Center, the Grand Moss Center on campus, working with Student Central, that we're working now with trying to not duplicate and say, hey, this is a new thing. The Grad Hub was very intentionally designed that we looked across campus and we're like, we have brilliant, I, people might not know this, so this is new. The University of Saskatchewan has some of the best staff and they are brilliant. Uh, and so we we're like, hey, let's, let's work together. Let's use brilliance. So we try to make sure let's not keep doing the same thing and redesigning all the resources. Rather, we worked with departments pulled in and guided students towards there. So we're really trying to fit a gap, not re-duplicate services. And we really want to help departments get students, so that way students are accessing their services. So it's very collaborative in nature, which means it's always shifting. And we have to be very, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting balance to be so guarded and also so open to change as well. Um, for me, uh, as my background in applied social psychology, I'm an evaluator at heart. Like if anyone wants to show me their theory of change or their program logic model over coffee, like I am down. Uh, but the grad hub, it was really important to me that it was designed by theory. It was designed by uh, as much graduate student theory as we could find to help inform why do these activities that we designed lead to the outcomes that we anticipate, as well as guided by evaluation theory to make sure that we're collecting the right data. Um, but it's this beautiful thing that I'm really excited of how it has actually uh, already, the feedback we've heard from students of saying, uh, I wish I had this at the start of my program for students who are convocating um, or students. Uh, I had, oh, Laura, you don't even know this. I had a new student who's joining our lab who's actually been accessing the graduate student um, grad hub that, uh, yeah, has been really super helpful. So it's been really helpful at all stages. Um, 
everyone, this is Luna who wanted to change slides. She was giving me the cue. So I'm going to take it and go to the next slide. But the values of the hub are uh, very critical and things I think anyone doing work is really thinking about what is guiding this work and what is really important. Because when pressures and deadlines come up, it's really nice to have those to land to. Right at the foundation of the work and just a quick glimpse back uh, a year and a half ago or so, Andrew, it, time flies in this COVID world. Andrew actually was in the audience at uh, one of our live, the last live orientation event. Um, and uh, you know what was really powerful about the live event was that for the first time ever in, in our college's history, we had nearly 500 grad students all in one room together. It's unheard of. Um, but we had a very talk to you, talk at you uh, approach with a bunch of panelists and it was a great event, but walking away from that event, Andrew happened to give me some, some feedback on an evaluation I did, knowing that we have something that we could potentially tap into that addresses needs at different times in, in, in what's happening with grad students. Orientation is one hour, one day, maybe three days throughout the year, and surely there's got to be a better way of approaching this. So the hub at its very core, the core value is it's student centric. And knowing that it's student centric and knowing that, you know, the university isn't a university without the students there, we kind of tipped it up on its head and said, okay, let's build this from this way rather than the opposite way. And let's talk with students um, and really have a different approach. So our guiding values guide our work. Uh, students are at the core of it. As if that wasn't the story I thought you were going with. I, I wasn't but... going to tell that story because I don't know exactly who's in the crowd, but you we'll contact get... me after and I'll tell you all about it. I will say that I, I should say my heart, my, my feedback was very uh, critical and very long. Uh, but, and I, I really wanted to tell this story. I've gotten much gentler after like this experience with my feedback, but I think it was really powerful was what Laura did when reading that was reached out to me and saw an opportunity for collaboration, which I think like without that so much work wouldn't have happened uh, the way that we did. And so um, I really like think that's really important to acknowledge that uh, that moment of that decision that uh, I wouldn't have done if I were in your shoes uh, yeah, really pushed and was very much in the values from the very beginning. When I was diving into all the literature and doing the review of what was going on and what theories were out there, I came across this one quote from Gardner that um, hit me and it was brilliant and it really talks about the way we are um, supporting graduate students and building them up and graduate students and graduate the student experience is really hard it's a hard experience and what we're encouraging isn't to make the experience less hard it's about when students are experiencing new things and they're having these new challenges, how do we make sure the right supports are there that they can take advantage and really pull these in so that when they're approaching these challenges, they're able to actually develop and they're actually able to go up rather than me having this challenge and not having the supports and falling flat and then their development actually like decreasing as things like mental health, um, isolation, all these other things that can be compounded. So really it was about how do we meet students where they're at and make sure that they have the agency, they are empowered to reach their goals. And it's not the fact, it's not um, kind of summed up by sometimes students have really great supervisors and sometimes students have supervisors who are really great at other things, but maybe supervisor isn't their strongest place 
and that it creates a negative experience that that kind of roll of the dice isn't the only influencer of a graduate student experience because we know in the literature that that can be a really pivotal um, piece. What if we had a tool that also allowed students to um, increase their supervisors capacities, but also just uh, really be able to take reins of their graduate education and go where they want to go. So as Lori said, so back, uh, so a little bit of timeline. Uh, so in 20, was it 2018? When did I start my PhD, 2018? I think it was 2019. I don't know, okay. like I said, this last year is, yeah. It, I don't know, I've lost a year. <laughs> yeah, I know, I think we all like that with COVID. Like, I don't know how long I've been in here. So in 2019, I started my PhD when the orientation was. It was a few months after that where Lori uh, invited me to join the steering council and advisory group for this looking at revamping graduate student education. And in that conversation as a group, we thought we need to hear from the students. We actually did a needs assessment. And the key themes that emerged from this assessment was we did focus groups and rapid interviews with graduate students, as well as uh, a survey to staff and faculty. And what emerged from the thematic analysis was there was a need for a graduate journey blueprint. So students really just wanted, uh, like, what am I in for? Can you just tell me the highs and the lows? What are the beats throughout my journey that I'm supposed to be hitting? Um, so that way I can kind of plan and frame. Uh, they wanted to know their, what am I actually accountable for? Like, what are my rights? What are my supervisor's rights? What do I need to make sure I'm doing? Uh, there was a lot of policies going on, but they felt like they weren't really sure what are the ones I should be acting on. Um, they wanted really, it's like, I need to know functional information right away. How do I get my student card? What are the steps I'm supposed to be doing at the start? I feel like I'm getting, I'm supposed to go to five different places, but everyone wants me to know, but it's not really clearly lined out for me. Uh, they wanted help with system navigation that a lot of students talked about, uh, either being bounced around uh, and people always saying it's the other person and then getting thrown back and forth between services or um, not even knowing where to start or who to go to for it is this thing something I can go to someone for. So really empowering students to know and have access to an information source that helps them gather information and know where they might wanna make their next steps. Uh, academic preparedness, they talked a lot about skills that they wish that they could develop that wasn't, that they didn't have, that they couldn't really find at the start of the university around uh, ethics, um, plagiarism, transition to graduate student, how do I manage my wellness in graduate student, in graduate school, uh, how do I manage my time, how is that different actually than from my nine to five job that I was doing after my undergrad for five years, I'm going back to grad school. How do I manage that time? Because it feels different. And then wanting a student community. Uh, we had a lot of students talk about um, either when they found a community uh, and how important and vital that was, or else some students who are saying that they're struggling finding that, that uh, they, they went to their, with their other friend to an event and then they saw they had a community and that they were wanting it. And so we were like, okay, how do we help facilitate this journey uh, that students are on and what they are looking for others and helping that connection, which is super critical in graduate school because it really does take a network to make it through. Okay, now some people's eyes may have just glazed over, but this is, one of, this is one of my favorite slides because it took a long time to design. Um, so this is our theory of change for the Grad Hub. So a brief overview for those who are um, not familiar with theories of changes or evaluation work. So every program, every service we offer, there is an idea. There is like, if we offer this, the students will get this or they'll change this way, they'll develop these skills. There's always an idea of change that we have. So that's the theory of change. It's that we know that if we do this, this will lead to this. That is, and then what a program logic model is a nice visual depiction of that theory. So that's what we have here is a nice program logic model. Here's our theory of with these inputs with, and these participants, as they partake in these activities, 
These are the short, intermediate, and then long-term outcomes. And what's really, you don't, there's no quiz, don't worry. Um, you don't have to study all these, but what we did wanna show is how intentionally everything was designed. And the theory of change was designed before the hub. So we designed how it was supposed to work, how the students wanted it to work, and then we actually matched it with a prototype of our design. So our program was first by student needs, then by theory, and then we actually developed the program to make sure that this happened. And now what we do is we evaluate and see how is this changing maybe as we see graduate students, maybe there's other outcomes, or is this not working? We know this plan, either the plan needs to change or we need to look at why is it not? Oh, we're offering the, the stage hub events at actually when everyone has classes, that everyone has that, oh, that's actually what's going on. It's not that this isn't a good program. And so using evaluation really allows us to not throw something away, but really understand and continue to grow and develop it. So that way it will work at one, two, at one point. And it already is at some capacity. So we've done a lot of, uh, you know, a little background, keeping it secret, keeping you interested, like what is the grad hub? Okay, I wanna know. So the grad hub is, now that I have everyone on the hook after the theory of change, everyone's just dying to know. The grad hub is a centralized location of synthesized critical information for incoming graduate students. The platform communicates information regarding supports and services, preparation, navigating the institution, and a conduit to have two-way conversation with students. So when Laura and I were talking about, we didn't know what the name was, and we just kept calling it the hub. And then at one point I asked like, could we do that? <laughs> like, let's just go with that. And it was perfect. We called it the grad hub because the, the idea was we literally looked at every page on the university, scanned it all, made a list of here are all the critical pieces. Now, how do we make sure that those are included and we're guiding students to the right information providing a nice synthesis so that way they know they want to go down that route and that that's really a big piece of what the grad hub, grad hub is. Um, we also, Lori created, uh, there's, a, there's a feedback survey, it's one question or two questions I think of just like, uh, what do you like, do you want to be uh, contacted about more information or what do we need to improve and that two-way conversation between graduate students and the department and the fact that we follow up with people um, is really impactful in graduate students. And I've been witnessing as it's been happening that graduate students and in our surveys, they say, wow, like I actually feel cared for, or wow, like I got my service needs met right away. And that uh, having this really direct uh, communication and often what we're doing is we're connecting them to the right person. Uh, in that if they can't find the information or we're helping build it in. So that cycle is really important as we develop and improve our program. So Andrew, we have a question that popped up um, from Cassidy. Um, she asks, are there plans to integrate administrative processes into the hub if they aren't already? Example, electronic forms that feed directly into backend administrative workflows. So uh, Casey, Kathy, I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure. I, I think you're Casey. Anyways, I can answer that question. In terms of um, integration, we're not there yet. Um, but what we are trying to integrate right at the front end is uh, collaboration with departments and units. So that works underway now. So what I mean by that is that uh, grad administrators, grad chairs, department heads, they have um, a, a link into the grad hub. So we feed in from the departments and then feed out through the hub, directing students wherever they need to go. The integration piece, like every, I'm sure, academy across Canada is uh, a million dollar question and one that would probably take five million or more to solve. So we're definitely thinking about how to integrate in terms of communicating and uh, directional challenges that students might encounter as well as admin team. Um, but right into the banner, what we call it USASC banner system, uh, we're a long way off. 
Well, we we do what we do do have huh, to do. Uh, we have our we do the forms. Like how we have at U of S, we do still use some really common paper forms that we do list uh, and point the direction of students to. So I would say, yeah, like the non-electronic versions are included and then we point them to how to do the electronic digital ones, yeah. Any other questions do we have on that? Nope. Here I love this is panel, by the way. Question and answer panel, it's fantastic. It just pops up. No, it's great. So here we have a lovely uh, figure here to outline. So Grad Hub is uh, what we use to kind of overarching of uh, the program. We have our Grad Hub, which is also our platform. So that is the main stage. It's the online web platform that provides a one-stop shop of the ac Academy information leveraging partner experience expertise. So that is the piece that we've kind of really been talking about. That was the first big phase of the Grad Hub. In its design, we had planned out, as you saw in the theory of change, um, the Grad Hub, Hub Lab, Hub Community. And we ended up doing focusing on each phase and then building on um, based on time and resources and testing. The second piece that we implemented was the Hub Lab. So this uses our allant learning management system called canvas and what is we did this intentionally so students can log in with their nsid so as soon as they're accepted they're able to access this and this is where they have all of their learning modules around project management time management um, ethics managing your health and wellness uh, preparing for your classes like how to interpret a syllabus how to find your classrooms like some of these very uh big steps that are uh, the only way to figure it out is either you know someone or you stumble. Uh, so to really help empower people that it's kind of much more systematic and that they can start before, uh, before their uh, onboarding and get to meet other students and really help reduce the anxiety and the fear towards the start and that they're more feeling like they're coming home and that they're excited and that they're prepared and knowing what they're entering and know what they're ready for their challenge. A cool feature about the Hub Lab also is, you know, we started creating this platform before the pandemic and, um, you know, all of a sudden it was, uh, you get a phone call from wherever and you're staying at home. And so now everyone pivoted to working from home in a, a, in a kind of a, a novel, but now weird environment one of the first hub modules that went live, and it would have been just a couple months after we were all told to stay home is uh, working remotely. Here are the resources you need. This is how you can stay productive. The module walks you through that. And at the outset, it was one of the most popular modules. We didn't create it. We created the home for it or another home for it, you know, subject matter experts on campus created the module or you know the online um, flow uh, but we pulled it under the hub with permission and uh, and that's the whole concept is that there's the experts uh, on campus that are creating these things and we pull it into the hub so it gets utilized and to build on that with when they are in those and they're seeing these presentations from campus partners and it's like this was Gwena Moss like they're building a relationship with Gwena Moss and they start and then they'll actually go and reach out to them so it's really yeah um I feel like the hub lab really grazed the areas of territories and really just centers uh the work of supporting graduate students and onboarding uh, and we're all working together for that shared mission one of the other things I really love about the LMS uh, is that it's it was intentional, but it's like it kind of like tricks students in learning how to use their LMS system before their first class. That we're using the same assessment tools, uh, we give them like self quizzes that they get to actually, uh, yeah, they get to use it, and that when they go to their first class, they they know they're doing it intuitively. 
uh, as well as we get to use the, the power of an app, the LMS system to track the evaluate and evaluate the, the hub success. So our students at the end of the module with their self assessments, are we noticing a change? Um, how many are they accessing? Are they doing them all? Or are they not? That it really helps us uh, really start to understand um, the impact of the hub. The last final piece and the piece that pulls out a lot of it, what we do together together is our hub community. So this is a space on our website that uh, on our platform that communicates all graduate events across campus. Um, so whether they're workshops or events that it pulls it into one central location um, rather than graduate students having to think, is this an undergraduate event? Undergraduate event? Is it not? It pulls in from other places. Um, and then students just know that whatever's on this page is fit for and they're welcome to event to attend. And often graduate students are welcome to attend all the events, I should say too. It is just, it was a, um, an assumption and a thought of like really wanting to make sure that they were being respectful of the spaces, but knowing that that's something really important that we communicate to students, as well as we do other programming events within this framework too. So we do every second Wednesday, Wednesday we do a uh, cafe and it's literally just a graduate student chat. I facilitate the conversations and it's there is no agenda. There is no agenda, there is no sale, there is uh, Lori and I there, graduate students come and we talk about COVID, we talk about our animals, we talk about bikes, uh, exercise bikes the one time, we talk about, uh, we talk about uh, losses, we talk about literally everything. Um, and students, when I, we ask students all the time, uh, when they come, why'd you come? Why'd you come to this event? Uh, and, or what were, your what were you expecting? And, I just was looking just to meet people and just to hang out. That that's all like that there was, that how powerful that is and graduate students coming back to these events of just helping build community and providing that space and orchestrating it. So here we're gonna now talk you through uh, the process, a little bit of the step-by-step -step so you can kind of get an overall picture as we walk on the journey. So some of these we have alluded to before. We had our advisory council that started in around, I think January of 2020 or December of 2019. I think it was That's when we discussed, when are we actually gonna be doing the, uh, how should we move forward? We discussed doing an evaluation. Uh, so my role was at that time, I volunteered to do the ethics and, plan the research design and do the data collection. In the data collection, we focus primarily on graduate students. And something I wanted to say too, is that we pivoted a lot in the data collection. We did focus groups and then we had a few and then we didn't really have a lot. I think we had like four. And then, uh, so we said, okay, we analyzed that data and said, what else do we wanna know? And then we actually ended up doing some rapid interviews. So there were 30 minute interviews and it was more my promise to graduate students. So some of them went 40, 45, but at the 30 minute, I acknowledged the time and I, I asked them where they wanted to go. And most people wanted to stay. Actually, everyone wanted to stay. Either we were done or they wanted to stay, but uh, we noticed a drastic change in participation with communicating that time limit shift. The, uh, the other one was we actually offered to do focus groups with faculty and staff and we didn't have uptake. And so we did a survey and then uh, we took what we were asking for and kind of transformed it a bit uh, and changed our perspective based on the authority data we had. And then we sent out a survey and we got a lot more uh, engagement than the none we had before. And so the thing was also uh, pivoting and always moving forwards and trying different ways of connecting with people and making sure voices were feeling heard, especially at the data collection time, it was April, 2020. So I always, I, at this moment, I'd like to acknowledge also all the graduate students during that time who came forward to share with us during a very hectic time with the only intention, they were all at the end of their programs that they wanted to help future graduate students. And so I'd like to acknowledge, uh, yeah, the fact that they did that uh, and that they're wonderful and generous humans. 
the thematic analysis we conducted. From there, we did the theoretical design. So we showed you the program logic model. That's when this piece came in. Uh, we worked on that, we would discuss that. And then from there, we went to the practical design. That's when we actually had a prototype built up, a uh, mock-up built up of here's how everything would look. Um, here's how it would function. We had consultations with that. Then we actually went and said, great, we're ready. Let's go to a platform development. That's when we used uh, the uh, Cascade system on campus, which is what we use to manage our web software. We also had a very important discussion on app versus platform. It was a very intentional conversation of the best way to move forwards. Uh, we ended up moving forward with a platform system for quite a few reasons. Um, one was it was easier. It was more effective updating. We allowed more capacity. Students knew how to use it. We knew that if they applied to the university, they knew how to use a website. So they knew how to, they would be able to navigate to the platform. Uh, not all students would download apps. Um, Google pulls into the platform. So some, if a student Googles, you ask something, there's a chance if it's specific and the grad hub happens that it will pull that information up. And so there was so much benefit uh, to it that we decided let's move forward with that rather than the app that we'd have to try and get people to download, that we would have to uh, teach people. We had to do a lot of um, we had to do more informational sessions and uh, we wouldn't be able to track the data as much. Whereas the data with the platform is super powerful in helping us both inform that this is working, people are gathering it, but also helping us advocate for further development and funding for continuing on this work, that we're actually able to uh, uh, actually enter in those conversations and say, okay, we think, like, how should we move forward in a very intentional way? So I think that that conversation is something very important for you to think about in your context, uh, especially with us in our, we have at the U of S, which I imagine a lot of other institutions go anywhere from the ages of 22 to about 88. So that is a huge age range of, uh, and asking people to do platforms when you still have students learning to use uh, like our pause system where, our, where students register. So that way we're like, let's make students' lives easier. And uh, it was, I and for me, Larry, I think we checked our egos. Like an app was the coolest thing to do and that we didn't do it. Yeah, I, I like technology quite a bit, but we actually made the decision not to. Just because I mean the the diversity and the availability and 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 um, so there's a lot of pros, but we weighed them very carefully. Yeah, I like to think about I like to talk about how much thinking and conversations we had throughout this because everything was so intentionally and collaborative. The next piece is one of my favorite moments of the grad hub. And we actually invited those who participated before to come back to another focus group and we showed them what we developed. We said, here's the grad hub. You told us what you needed. Did we do? Did we follow through? Uh, is this working? Is it not? And we had um, we had a very affirming feedback of this is uh, I wish I had this. This is great. And then even better feedback of could you move this or I don't understand this or could there this exist? So. We were so happy because not only was it what students wanted, but we got more information of how we needed to push it further. From there, we got the green light from our, our students who were helping us, and then we moved forward to the Grad Hub pilot, where we actually made it live, uh, and that would have been in September of 2020 was when we went live. Um, right around orientation time. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great for especially for the COVID orientation that we were able to kind of present it live. Um, one of the things between the around the follow up focus group was a conversation Lori and I had um, about the project and that we had a very big scope. And then we said, actually, we needed to go here and we put some things, uh, put a pin in some things and said, we'll come back to that. And we've done that, I think, three times now where we've pivoted, we've pulled back things, we've uh, really shaved off scope creep to make sure we were being very intentional 
and making sure the first thing was good and then building. And that's a really critical piece that I'm really happy that we, we've done and something I've brought into my own life and my own work is I start doing that a lot more now. Uh, and from there, the Grad Hub pilot, we had Grad Hub growth. So more people started using it. We started doing, uh, we launched in January of 2021. We launched the first Lab Hub module as a pilot. Um, right now we're in the process of developing all of our other modules. We will actually show you kind of what those topics are later that came from our lit review and our needs assessment. Uh, right now we are in the process of campus implementation. So we are doing another needs assessment around all of our campus partners and what do the resources they need? What are their thoughts on the design again? How can we make it better? And what do they need if a student came to them? What information can we provide a two-pager that helps them answer questions or with like a video to show the high pieces, whatever they want. We want to know what they need and we can help meet that need to make sure that we're able to implement this and uh, staff across campus are aware and can support and connect graduate students and use this tool uh, collaboratively. And we are off to the official launch of our uh, grad hub uh, from the pilot and which is going to be going in 2021 in September. Isn't that right, Lori? Ah, perfect. So right now we are at, uh, we've thrown a lot at you. And so we have wanted to create space here for uh, questions, conversation, and from there we'll enter the second half where we go a little bit more. And so what I'll, I'll let people know what's coming up so that way you can, uh, if you have questions now or you want us to focus on anything. Next up, what we're gonna be doing is going a little bit more in detail over the Grad Hub. We'll actually do a bit of a tour of the Grad Hub and then we'll go over the modules that we're envisioning, the hub community, uh, and then we go over some takeaways. So we kind of go a little bit more, we told you about the journey, now we actually go more into what is the, uh, the actual meat and potatoes. So Andrew, we have a question that's popped up from Rob Desjardins. Um, uh, he says, woo, great project, I'm paraphrasing. Um, wondering about the wellness resources you've made available through the hub under Navigate. This is your baby, Andrew. I was like, oh, I, was like, I didn't know I was going to be quizzed on the website. Hey, this is this is Andrew's baby. Um, so uh, Rob says that their students have expressed a need to have those type of resources front and center. So. Can you kind of walk us through the process of identifying and categorizing and curating those processes? We went back and forth on this a lot. Um, and let me tell you, it was not an easy task, but how did you, this is Andrew's baby, so I'll let him explain. As a one thing I was like, okay, you're asking me to go back to the summer of 2020, which was just a chaos summer for everyone. It was but chaos. Uh, yeah, so when we were doing the, um, the information, like I literally did an audit of the university and was making information. And so luckily with the, I've actually been work, I've been associated with the University of Saskatchewan for 13 years, um, from undergrad to grad, to working, to working at an affiliate. So like Luckily, like, I'm really comfortable with the website. Uh, so I went through everything and kind of pulled all the information. Um, and some of them, I actually did cue cards. I actually wrote down like just the big pieces and I sorted them on my floor. Um, and from there, that's how I, I was finding, I was looking, I was analyzing them. Where are the themes? Where are the common pieces? How can I tie information together? And what we ended up doing was, so we have on the website, you'll see the four sections, um, uh, which are, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just to answer this question, because I'm just gonna. So uh, Andrew had a sorting hat, kind of like. There you go, yeah. Yeah. As a, and, I just wanna show this one, <laughs> the four. <laughs> uh, we have the, what we did was we actually put them in these and we actually did it over kind of, the time of how students engaged. So we looked at putting information, what is things around the transition? So what is graduate student school like? 
what is the transition from undergrad to grad, from master's to PhD? Uh, what is all the vocabulary you need to know? We created a vocabulary that we never had before that just goes over A to Z. Lori wrote a bunch of terms and defined them within the U of S context, and it's great. And then we did, what did they need to know about arriving? So the university, the city, um, because we're in Saskatchewan, it's cold, we get people from all over the world, and sometimes they think they have a winter coat, and then we show up sometimes with actual winter coats to show them that it's really cold here. Uh, and then we went to, okay, what about navigating now? We went over, what are all the supports and services? How does our governance work? What about the GSA? And then Blueprint was really about the, the tools they needed throughout their program, all of the tools they had access to. Um, and what we did, this was very intentionally on my part, was I used scaffolding from uh, like teaching philosophy of information in the transition was, didn't have as many, uh, had very like high level details. And we got more concrete with our wording using more graduate lingo as you get through the grad hub. And so we do that because we don't want to overwhelm students and that as they read something in the transition, um, then we get a build on it later on. And so it's also if when you we check it out, you'll see at the bottom, we can hit next and we can actually read it kind of like a paper um, guidebook too. Um, but so that's where we kind of sorted everything. I don't know if that answers the question. Well, and I think Rob was talking about um, especially the wellness piece. And so right now we have them in Navigate. And so when we get into the tour, if you can walk us through the wellness piece and how come we put it there and the logic behind what we're thinking about wellness. If, yeah. So when we get to the tour, let's take a look at that section. I love that. And then uh, that. we have another question here in terms of the tech side of things. Um, how did we build it? So in terms of tech, um, like Andrew mentioned, uh, USASC uses Cascade as their web platform. So we're bound by certain rules and regulations in terms of uh, uh, code and XML stuff that we can use. Um, so it's really easy for us to just uh, plug in context into this Cascade system, which is basically it's all built as a static web page. And then and, and that speaks to how come we actually went with the web rather than an app. Um, we've probably on a weekly basis tweak the resources as things change and move and um, we've made it so it's extremely scalable. That's the beauty about static web pages. So it's, it's really in concept super easy in terms of platform static HTML. And it really impact like I remember I was like I feel like we did something that wasn't as innovative and that made it innovative <laughs> like the fact that we didn't go and design an entirely new website that we used already resources that were available and that allowed easy graduate students to engage with it that I think staying within what was already created or accessible. I'm not seeing any more questions, Andrew. Just the uh, the piece about, um, it's interesting in this, in wellness, uh, we actually met with one of the directors, like all of our partners on campus, but particularly the wellness is what had us uh, driving a lot of the content. Um, and uh, I, Andrew can explain this much better than I can. But the whole concept of the hub really is to provide that bucketing system where students can interact with the platform at any given time in their program. And what we're trying to do through that platform is at the almost front end or front load their experience. So they, so we set up expectations right at the front. Um, what we're actually seeing is that 
the support page is not being utilized as much as the blueprint pages, for example, because what we think from our analysis is that we're giving the right information in context to when they need it in their program, thus making the supports page, although very accessible, not they don't need to be a, a front and center priority, which is kind of backwards thinking. Um, but by front loading the experience, we're almost preventing some of those issues from happening, which they would need to rely on the wellness support. But Andrew can show you more of that. No, I love it. I think that you, yeah, you did, you, you hit it nailed on and I can, and I'll show later too what you were describing. Okay, let's do her. Should we, I guess, yeah, we have more time to do it. Okay, how am I gonna, wait, how am I gonna, okay, I have to think about my computer, because I have two computers right now. I was like, which one do I have to use? Uh, okay. Let me have... Oh, it didn't. Oh, well, sorry. I'm not. Uh, I'm going to do that over again. Uh, stop sharing. There we go. Here we go. So here is the front page of the Grad Hub. Uh, so you uh, you got a little bit of a sneak peek and uh, before the questions where we just started about the different sections. And so what I'm going to do is go over kind of just the top navigation bar here. So here is what we have for transition. Um, looking at providing just some high level information. Something else we were also cognizant of is because of this Grad Hub is, it's a website, it's linked to from the CGPS. We also know that potential graduate students within our institution or others may stumble upon it. So this was just really helpful information uh, for all students um, with knowing and being prepared. From there, then we go to arrival. So we have the USS culture, new to Canada, YXC, first time on campus. So really theming them towards kind of like steps you would go to when you're moving, that they're kind of clustered, yeah, like Laura was saying, thematically, um, rather than um, as an institution, usually we, we yeah, push things based on departments or oversight, whereas this hub kind of threw everything in a blender and said, okay, what actually belongs together from a student's perspective? when they're engaging. So when they're doing their, uh, which we'll look at like first time on campus, it talks about computer and library. Like it talks about all those, uh, even though they're all different departments and that we point them in the right direction. A fun we thing about, uh, fun thing that I really liked creating on this site was making some nifty videos. Um, we're very cautious about too much text uh, knowing that we're in a in that kind of world these days. So we created a bunch of fun 30 second videos and you'll see if you get into, Andrew, can you go to hashtag YXC? <clears throat> oh yeah. So super graphically rich. We wanted to tell the story a little bit through pictures. Um, and that's part of the refinement stage that's coming up is that we will plan on at some point reducing the amount of text and filling it full of pictures so people can are the pictures will tell the story and guide them where they need to be um yeah i like yxe that's so much yeah. fun and then at the very bottom there's like a crazy video that talks about you know how we talk in saskatchewan me being born and raised in in saskatchewan uh I have some really weird sayings that people don't understand, like Vico is chocolate milk and bunny hug. And they're like, why you want to go hug a bunny? And so this is kind of a fun thing about the pages, the way they're created is that the front end, we talk about 
a super casual, conversational, um, very, very approachable, I think. And then as we get into blueprint and navigating the system, the language shifts from casual to informative to formal. So it's, yeah, takes you through. Uh, and yeah, you, we go over, like we really consider uh, and always are building like, what are all the pieces that graduate students kind of know and really focusing on, yeah. I, one of the things is we're really also focusing on before they get to us. And we're really working on that piece too. Uh, that uh, understanding that and wanting to know that as they apply, especially if they're coming from out of province, if they're coming because of us to us, that we want to be and support them with coming to us. And when you come to the airport, <laughs> if you're from Cuba or Toronto, that you don't show up in a bunny hug it on January 4th, like that's super important. Or we'll bring you a coat and mitt. <laughs> So, and then as you can see here, yeah, we have, uh, people can just go um, through it as like a page, like just next by next, and it takes you through all the pages, which is really great. Um, another big one, so in Navigate, we have uh, supports and services, accessing services guide, which we're building out, uh, which is something I wanna talk, highlight too, is uh, supporting, Supporting graduate students and accessing services is really, really important. Laura, can you talk about the supports and services for one quick second? You bet. So essentially what we tried to do in terms of support and services, is very two different categories. We had this rearranged completely different at the front end of the project. Um, we wanted to hit on academic supports um, in terms of all of the wonderful things that our campus partners provide over and above. So we're looking at over and above the typical grad program, right? So whether it's how to access the library, um, but not only access the library. So now how do you work the journal system and what is Zoteros and how can it help you as a grad student? We're, we get a little bit deeper into the nuts and bolts in terms of academic supports. And then if we think about, um, you know, from a wellness perspective, we think from, um, you know, creating your community and how to get involved and um, things that happen in grad student world that is different from undergrad in terms of, well, you, you're now new to Saskatchewan, potentially new to Canada, You've moved your entire family, let's say across the world and your two children and your spouses come with you. And how, what, what does that look like in terms of, you know, how do you get settled in Saskatchewan and what kind of support do you need from that perspective? In, as well as what kind of a support do you need in terms of your program? So it's a, a very comprehensive, list. So um, we gave it four key categories. And the reason why we didn't put this front and center, again, right at the front end of the site, is that we hope as students are building their independent learning plans, we know that they have to have programmatic information. Um, and so in, in terms of program, you're not going to see a lot of content uh, with that on the site, rather building the supports and services around their program, because really at the end of the day, what the intention here is to have graduate students successful in their program, complete in a timely manner. Um, and while they're doing that, surround themselves with this toolkit and we're encouraging them to create that toolkit from whatever their circumstances might be. We don't want to elude that you're gonna have a, a rough time in grad school because it's craziness, what we're alluding to is first you need a winter coat and you need to find out what a bunny hug is and here's your program and this is who you need to talk to because the grad admin always knows what's going on in the department and build your toolkit around what your unique experience is. So that's why it's in that navigation section. 
And to uh, translate for those who don't know, a bunny hug is what the rest of Saskatchewan calls a hoodie. And the correct term is bunny hug, yeah, but yeah. it's a debate I get into with every other province. I didn't know what a hoodie was until last year. I didn't either. I was like, why are you calling, like my friends in Saskatchewan call it a hoodie. I'm like, it's a bunny hug. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh. I actually always thought like the zipper one, this is like a side now, the zipper one, I always called those hoodies and the ones I went over was like the bunny hug. <laughs> yeah, that's totally how it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, another really big key piece that uh, to highlight that came up in the focus in groups in the interview was uh, the piece of crisis and advocacy. So uh, graduate students either disclosed peers or their own experiences of, um, being in very difficult times and not knowing their rights or not knowing who to go to. Maybe um, it was unfortunate that they had a faculty member who maybe wasn't respecting their rights um, within their legal rights within um, the working union for graduate students. Um, and so making sure that students are informed of their rights so that way um, and knowing of who they can connect with uh, was really important for uh, graduate students uh, and for grad, like graduate students commented for they wanted that available for themselves and their peers that they like highlighted and uh, there was a big concern of not having this information front and center and so we wanted to make sure that uh, we mentioned these uh, specifically the GSA and uh, the Public Service Alliance of Canada a few times throughout the grad hub so um, in different contexts so in another place we actually describe what the GSA does in the governance section so Andrew, just a time check. We're about 15, 16, uh, math's not my strong suit, 17 minutes away from our completion time, so. Okay, so I'm gonna show one more thing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show one more thing. Um, quickly, uh, the blueprint is something really uh, that I know I'm really proud of, of this way of supporting graduate students. Um, also like here, the resources. So we put uh, links to all the resources, policies and governance docs, uh, graduate student handbooks from across all programs uh, that we could, that were online and available so far. Uh, frequently asked questions, direct link to the Hub Lab, our Hub community page and our contact us, which is also has the suggestion box that we talked about. Um, so yeah, very short, quick, uh, and we get, I would, I'm pretty happy with the fact how many students have actually already, they will, like anytime we do an event right afterwards, we're getting feedback. Uh, the hub community, just show uh, a little bit of, so here's where people can access the grad cafe that we talked about, the Zoom link, meeting links right there. Um, we have the dates, uh, other events, um, and so yeah, and deadlines. So like really, it's just being very, I think when I really summarize the Grad Hub, specifically the platform, it's really the way that we're being very intentional with organizing and communicating information. It's that we don't always need tons of bells and whistles, but we need to be very purposeful and intentional with how we communicate and build uh, people's knowledge. Okay, and then the last page I want to show is, so uh, we have our program stages here, so that way I'm working on a visual, this I'm trying to visualize this, but I kind of want to make it a messy, clean diagram, which is an oxymoron, but really outlining the different stages that graduate students know um, based on different types of programs that they know that they kind of, that they work through and that there's links to more information. And then when they go down, we communicate, here's how to find your program requirements. So we have over 80 different programs. So we're like, we can't have a specific guide for 80 different programs that are always changing. But what we could do was we could educate students on how to do it themselves. So we're like, here's find your program requirements. Here's how to interpret your requirements. Here's planning your program. So like we're really helping just educate and build students in 
throughout the process because graduate students are super smart, but if we give them the right information, that's going to really support them. And uh, we talk about progress delays. If you're transferring program disruptions, here's what you do that like, even at the start, they're probably not worrying about program transfers or disruptions, but what they are doing uh, is now they know and they have the seat of where they'll go if they do hit a disruption that they're like, oh, I know there's something on the hub, something within the blueprint section and they'll look through all and then they'll find it um, or they'll email us. But this is like, this is, so this one's my favorite page. Okay. Whoops. So this is the uh, like we these are the different kind of pillars of our platform that we have went over. The next piece are hub labs. So the the module on Canvas. Uh, here are our current planned um modules that are in development that uh, came from both the literature review and what graduate students needed so course preparedness like i talked about uh wanted to have a course that talks about all the pieces of how do i actually start my course what is the syllabus uh, what are my rights within my syllabus how should i interpret it what is important for me to look at um, planning your program, walking them through that. What, if, do they plan on doing any graduate student study abroad? Are they doing any, are there practicums in their program that they wanna be doing, like that they can start just thinking about that uh, and giving, we're get, designing a tool that helps them write things down or capture them that they can change um, and just guiding them through what the university is, um, health and wellness, time and project, project management, RA, and research assistants and teaching assistant skills. Uh, these were really, uh, there were, yeah, graduate students shared times of, yeah, like going in front and doing their role and not knowing anything before entering. So how do we teach uh, a teaching assistant? Here's a question you should ask your professor that you're marking for beforehand. Uh, looking at the lab safety, what does that look like? Plagiarism and copyright is really huge um, that we're, we really want to highlight, uh, especially within um, uh, graduate students that really a, educating them what it is and how to avoid it and actually giving them, uh, here's a, like a self-assessment after which one is plagiarized and getting them to actually really understand rather than making assumptions uh, of their understanding when they come in or uh, that they're able to do it, that we actually make sure as gra every graduate student who comes within our program has the opportunity to learn this and uh, feel confident in their ability. Indigenous peoples, uh, graduates, international students, this was actually really interesting for me. This came from international students. Uh, a lot of international students really highlighted around wanting to understand the culture and the history of other peoples of this land. Uh, and that when they come over that they, um, there's stigma, there's prejudice, um, but then there's also all this reconciliation and indigenization and that graduate students then like, they really want to understand how can I help? What is my role within reconciliation and wanting to understand the history. And so that really uh, with us and we're like, yes, let's really talk about uh, indigenous people, our history, but also culture, also ceremony. Um, and working with elders on how should we be teaching this? And so working with partners. So that's something I'm really excited for that's in development. Um, and then navigating technology, building your networks and then building a social networks and support. So that way you have all your, uh, how do you do that in grad school? How do you make sure that you know the right people that are gonna facilitate your wellness, facilitate your career success? that that's actually a really big skill that we don't want to assume that every graduate student knows that we really want to empower them with. Hub community, we really went over this, uh, these pieces around what's the purpose uh, of developing that belonging, development and excellence.
evaluation for me is really, well, look at my program. Like I think it'd be weird to be in my program and say I don't like evaluation. Uh, so evaluation for the program is very critical to me. And I really do think it's something that has really aided the development and the success of the program in giving us the right data that we can interpret and act upon and make decisions based on. So moving forward, we wanna to continue to use uh, evaluation in, through Canvas, Google Analytics, feedback loops, surveys, that we're using all these tools that were already built of, of continuing allowing data to come in while collaborating with other peoples and also interpreting, interpreting this data and making plans on this data, that we're taking a very participatory approach in evaluation, that we're participating and guiding with all these other stakeholders in making our decisions so that way it's moving forward uh, with people, not us leading. And last, the lessons gained, uh, the evaluation, it's, it's like a scary thing because it also teaches you like, uh, it teaches the things that you didn't do better. And so I think Lori and I always practice our humility in really when we're learning from the data and when you put all this work into it and knowing that it's beautiful and it has so much more work that we want to go into it, but that uh, scaling it- it's not beautiful. <laughs> what? Sometimes we've learned that it's not beautiful. We think it is, yeah. but it really isn't. And so learning to adapt when you when you kind of are pretty sure that you're right and everybody else is wrong, um, humility is a big thing in this platform. It's built in. Yeah. Uh, uh, adaptability and like Laura and I, we notice this a lot when we collaborate with people and we present, and sometimes we get feedback and people are like, oh, it needs to have this. And we say, great, let's do that. And uh, we notice a shift and like the person's like, what? Like <laughs> they're expecting sometimes resistance, but really this project wasn't designed to, for those conversations to happen and for uh, us to work together and building that in. Because when a campus expert says that we need something, they're the expert and we really do believe them. Uh, and that, that was out of our scope. So we'll work with them and we'll build that in and now it's better. And that's flexibility and openness. There we go. Laurie, I really wanna give you this slide because like you like love the Google Analytics and uh, have been watching it. And I really wanna, yeah, cause you do it so well. I'm kind of a data nerd and so especially when it comes to Google Analytics and they haven't paid me to say that, but they should. Um, anyway, I really wanted to, we wanted to highlight the asynchronous approach um, in that this map on the right hand side shows you on any given day where people are looking at the Grad Hub from. Um, and what really was exciting to me, and I can look at this in real time is that you know, there's definite spikes to the usage, uh, one being a traditional date of orientation, September 2nd, 3rd, 4th, whatever it might be. Our users online at any given time, and it shows me this map of where all they're from, and it, it makes me so excited. It's like, oh, there's someone way across the world that I'm actually connecting with, and through our team, we're speaking to them. So that's very exciting to me. Uh, I have a dog next door working. So um, anyways, some light stats, you know, over the last six months or so, we've had about 12,000 users any given time, a couple thousand a month. Um, and what I found the most interesting is that 96.6% of those 2,000 users access the web from their phone. And it's even more interesting to me to know that, um, you know, I think we made the right decision in terms of the platform because they don't, it's just, you open your phone, you go to your web browser and boom, you're in. There is no messing around with downloads or updates or anything like that. I just um, wanted to, with that, so like, cause I just learned that data this past week uh, and so for me to get allow people into my thought press is when I see that, 
um, I now know I actually want to do a data audit of the hub on my phone. I want to go through it on my phone and make sure the readability of it because that was way different than I pictured in my head. And so like that way of we use data uh, just to kind of give a glimpse of that. Yeah, and I mean, you can read what's on this slide there, but the other thing that we found really interesting is that, um, you know, out of those 2000 people, their first interaction is, is almost always direct. 90% of the folks that visit our site are direct. So it tells me that we're doing something right with our marketing. Um, very few access it through a search. Um, so I was pretty pleased about that. But the very first page they go on is blueprint. And so it tells me that the blueprint, that's what the very specific piece we heard from grad students when we were talking to them is they want a map of A, B, C, D, E. Um, and I think that we're delivering on that from this information. We also know that our blueprint page has to be very refined. And uh, so, you know, as we are in this refinement stage right now, that's what we're doing. And then, so those three key areas of the platform, blueprint, navigating, and community. And interestingly enough, um, um, there's other stuff that came out of the evaluation right at the outset from the needs assessment. Um, but those are the three key things that we heard from students saying that they need to understand better. They need to understand where the college is in that whole governance structure, who to talk to here, and if this is the problem or if this is the question, rather than um, I think of that cartoon, you know, and you go to Wicket A and and at the DMV and, and they say, no, you can't renew your license here. And then you go back to the line for 10 or 12 hours. And then you go to Wicket two and it's the same person from Wicket one that says, yeah, I can stamp that for you and a stamp and you're out the door. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's pretty key. Anyways, I mean, just some soft stats. I could talk about data all day, but uh, it tells us a lot of things about what we're doing. Awesome, thank you. And when I uh, when I think about uh, the the uh, the hub and how we approach the platform, like we also really used um, approaches that are more I can't I think they're called sprints. It's like more common in like tech, where uh, we actually developed a small uh, uh, prototype, collected data, built, and we built out and improved rather than developing this beautiful it's done and then we gave it everywhere because in P they're, they're shock. how do you onboard people? Whereas we've been collaborating and people have been hearing about the grad hub and getting random updates kind of throughout that uh, and we keep building it with people um, rather than yeah, having a, a fully fleshed out project at the end, which is much more comfortable, but uh, the, pro the hub wouldn't be where it is if we did that approach, that it's only where it is because we really allow for that feedback to come in. In closing here, so some real takeaways um, that this intervention, because it is an intervention, uh, it's, a, it's an intentional activities that have intended outcomes. So it's utilized as program theory that is supported both by, uh, supported by social psychological theories. It's informed and built on literature and graduate student development theory, what's been noticed to work in the past, what skills graduate students need to know on, um, the importance of community. That's why we have the community because it's so important. Um, we looked at other institutions, um, looked at what they were doing, what was working well, what maybe wasn't working well. Um, program is structured to be evaluated for program improvements. We're not, uh, we're in it for the long haul. Like we're invested and we know that next year the hub will look different. We don't know what that looks like yet, but we know it'll just happen because it's growing and evolving. It's really focused on graduate student needs front and center. Uh, the one thing I would say that is the one thing Lori and I would never budge on would be the fact that it's not focused on graduate students. That that's the only thing we'll push back on is that uh, if people want to play in our sandbox, it's like you're welcome to play, but make sure that our rule is that graduate student needs come first. 
uh, and then continues to improve and grow. Uh, that, yeah, it's a very living thing. So when people say there's this, there's a typo, we go and fix it, but it's a very much this, uh, it's alive and it's not uh, just within Lori and I. And I think that's another circling back to also the app piece, the platform it allows for us to um, easy transitions. Speaking of transitions. <laughs> perfect. Absolutely segue. perfect handoff. Well, thank you so much, Andrew and Lori, for that uh, wonderful webinar, which actually uh, kind of turned out to be more of like a podcast. I like that the, uh, the conversation was so free flowing. That was fantastic. Um, I think there'll definitely be some people getting in touch with you after this about uh, how they can implement some of these strategies in their own institutions. Um, so with that, I will end this, uh, this webinar at the KEG Symposia. And I would like to invite people to join us uh, for tomorrow's events, uh, a town hall with Dr. Ted Hewitt, president of SHRC, uh, and a showcase on innovation in research creation in art and design programs, uh, specifically from the Emily Carr University of Art and Design. Uh, so with that, we'll do our uh, virtual clapping of the hands for Andrew and Lori for a fantastic presentation. Uh, and thank you to our guests for joining us today. Uh, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Great work, guys. I will.